Hey everybody, I'm Christina Payne and this is For the Love of Sports. If you watched the Bucks 76ers game last night, then you might recognize my next guest. She's a broadcaster for NBA on TNT. Joined by Stephanie Reddy. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. It's an honor to have you on the show. You are the first woman on For the Love of Sports. And it's actually really cool that you are because you are a woman of many firsts. <laughs> <laughs> you were the first uh, woman to coach a men's professional league team and the first full-time female NBA analyst for an NBA team with the Charlotte Hornets. That's so, right. It's my pleasure to be here with you. I'm excited. Uh, but yes, you have broken many barriers. So let's start with that. So you coached a men's professional league team, the Greenville Groove, which was formerly a part of the D League, which we now know as the G League. Right. But what was it like at that time being the first woman to get a position like that? It was very exciting. Um, I would not be telling you the truth if I did not admit that I was nervous about the opportunity. Um, and not because it was basketball related. You know, I've basketball has been a part of my life, basically my whole life, as long as I can remember. But because it was something new, the league was new. You know, we hadn't played a single game yet. I was moving to the South in South Carolina, and I'm kind of a Northern girl, you know, so it, there were a lot of things that factored into the nerves. Yeah. that were not basketball related. But once I got there, everyone was awesome. Um, the head coach at the time was Milton Barnes, and he and I are still very tight to this day. We developed a really great friendship, both of our families. Um, it was a really good experience, you know, and of course winning is always helping with the pleasure that you experience, especially with coaching and playing. Mm -hmm. um, and we happened to win that very first championship, so that also helps me with my fond memories. Good, good. So I know, you know, oftentimes when people are the first to do something, um, even though it's groundbreaking, there may be some not so positive times, not so positive things that come with it. So did you ever experience any disrespect or sexism? It's a great question. And <laughs> the short answer is yes, but yeah. not really. Do you know what I mean? Like okay. it's, it's one of those things where if you're a woman in this world at all, you mm -hmm. experience sexism, yeah. right? It's just there. And it's unfortunate, but that's how people are. Mm -hmm. um, but specifically in the world of sports, it's going to be there. And yeah. it, it may be something as small as a comment that mm -hmm. you hear someone make because mm -hmm. they don't think that I could be a coach because I'm a woman. So they assume that I am a manager or the coach's wife mm -hmm. or, you know, some things like that, where it's mm -hmm. not like a direct shot between the eyes, but it is a reflection of how our society views women, right? right. When you hear those things. Right. Um, so that's why I say yes is the short answer. But mm -hmm. in terms of things that were like thrown in my face, I never had any issues. Oh, okay. All the players that I coached were amazing. I'm still friends with some of them today. Like we still text and call each other, talk about our kids. Um, and a couple of them are coaching basketball themselves now, you know, so mm -hmm. we talk about that. So I never had any issues with the players. Um, I always tell people that, you know, when you get to sports at any level, but especially at the elite high levels, mm -hmm. those athletes just want to get better. Two yeah. things. They want to get better and they want to win games. Yeah. If you can help them do that, they don't care who you are. You could be from <laughs> Mars with a helmet on. And <laughs> if you're going to help them check uh -huh. those boxes, they're right behind you, you know? So that was the beautiful part about my experience. Um, there was one coach, an opposing coach, okay, who we had, an, and it wasn't, again, in my face. And this is the thing mm -hmm. that's interesting to me. A lot of times people who have sexist and or racist views are not bold enough oh, it to was say it to your yeah. face. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there was an instance where we were, um, I was the head coach, the acting head coach, because Milton Barnes, um, got suspended for a game, which is a funny story separately. Um, and in the, in those days in the D league, we only had two coaches, a head mm -hmm. coach and an assistant coach. Okay. And we had one trainer 
who also was the equipment manager and the travel person. You know, it was small, skeletal, you know, crew. So when the head coach gets suspended and I move over to be the head coach, now I don't have any assistant coaches. So the trainer was basically my assistant, my assistant coach, coach during that game. So we played a game. It was pretty close. We ended up winning the game. But I found out after the fact, like that summer, um, because a player who played on that opposing team I was friends with because we were from the same area. Mm -hmm. And I saw him at home that summer. And he told me that in the locker room, that coach was saying all sorts of disrespectful things. Basically, like, we better not lose to this girl mm -hmm. type stuff. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think that's how he lost his team. Yeah. You know, I think they were like, right. what? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about? And he said that he told, he basically stood up and was like, well, you got one more time. Right. You know, like, because yeah. he was, he was saying things, saying, I said it the nice way. So you can imagine what he was saying. Yes. No. That's um, so yeah, that's the only like direct incident that I heard of. And, and that, of course, it wasn't to my face. It was after the fact. It was behind your back. Right. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy you didn't have to deal with anything like blatantly. Yeah. Me too. Towards you. Yeah. But, um, so let's go back to where your coaching began at your alma mater, Coppin State. And, uh, you coach women's volleyball and men's basketball there. So first, did you play either sport? I did. So I play, I went to Coppin State to play basketball. Okay. Um, they recruited me, but I ended up not signing with them. So I walked on. I went to Coppin State on an academic scholarship. Okay. And I walked on the basketball team. Mm -hmm. I made the team. First game out the shoot, I, I was a starter oh. as a walk-on. <laughs> as a walk-on. Okay. Yeah. And so then... Um, after that very first game, the head coach pulled me aside and offered me a full scholarship moving forward. Wow. So it was very rewarding. Um, the volleyball component, I played in high school, and then I played my last two years at Coppin on their volleyball team. And the team was horrible, which was how <laughs> I got the opportunity to, <laughs> to coach when I graduated. Okay. And what made you transition from women's volleyball to men's basketball? So it was all happenstance. So I was offered the head women's volleyball coach the summer after I graduated. Okay. So I was the youngest division one head coach in the country. Wow. And I was coaching my former teammates, you know, because yeah. I just graduated. Yeah. Um, and so we had the longest losing streak in division one in the country, like active. It was like, I don't know how many seasons, two or three years worth of losing matches. Um. <laughs> Okay. Right. So I basically was like, well, I can't mess this up. Yeah. You know, I may as well, <laughs> I may as well take a shot. Can't yeah. get any worse. Exactly. Um, and so we worked really hard and the girls were amazing. Like I was just scouring campus. Hey, you're six, three, you want to play volleyball? I'll teach you. You know, like yeah. that's how it was. Yeah. Um, and we ended up winning our very last match of the season. Nice. And you would have thought we won our conference championship <laughs> because the students were there supporting. They like ran on the court. You know, it was amazing. Uh, yeah. And so the athletic director at the time who hired me to be the volleyball coach was also the head men's basketball coach, Fang Mitchell, okay. the legendary Fang Mitchell. I have mm -hmm. to say that. Um, and so he saw that and he was thinking, well, if she can turn this volleyball program that was like abysmal, uh -huh. what could she do with basketball? Because he knew my passion was basketball. That was where my heart was. That's my whole life. Mm -hmm. Volleyball was fun but I didn't love it like yeah. I love basketball, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he, he took a chance and hired me on his staff with the men's team because he's like, okay, she's doing this with volleyball. She's probably going to be pretty good with basketball. And so mm -hmm. that's how it started. Oh, that's really cool. And so that's how you got the opportunity. Wow. That's, yeah. that's really cool. So then you got into broadcasting. So how did coaching prepare you for your broadcasting career? Mm. So well, it prepared me so well because with coaching, especially with basketball, you really have to break down the X's and O's. You know, it's about strategy and matchups and what you're taking advantage of and, and how you do that as the game progresses. You know, you have to make those adjustments in real time, live action. You don't have time to like, time out, let's think about this, you know? Yeah. Um, so when I got into television, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't major in broadcast communications. Mm -hmm. I was learning literally on the job, which is... I don't recommend that, <laughs> which was dangerous. You know, it's live TV. A lot of things could have gone wrong. I could have gotten fired and never worked again. Yeah. Um, but because I had such a, an extensive knowledge of the game itself, mm -hmm. it helped bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know anything about the technical side of it. 
Okay. You know, I didn't know like, you know, how do I look into the camera? How do I yeah. hold my microphone? All those things. I had no yeah. clue. I was learning as I was going, but because I knew what I was talking about, mm -hmm. it, helped. it helped. I was very comfortable on that court, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and when I had to ask questions of players and coaches, I was very comfortable with those conversations because I had because been you, there. You had been there. Yeah, exactly. So that's, I feel like it prepared me a lot. And, and even breaking down film, like when I'm in my mm -hmm. analyst role, doing a, a game, going back to coaching helped me so much because I had to break down so much film for scouting reports and figuring out strategies yeah. against opponents. I used all of those same tools as an analyst. Yeah. You know, I'm watching the game film and I'm deciding, okay, so if I were coaching, how would I create this advantage in a matchup? Mm -hmm. If they're going to sub in X, Y, and Z players, who would I sub in to counter that move? You know, so yeah. I'm doing all of those things as I'm preparing for the game. So when it happens, right. just like coaching in real time, I can talk about those adjustments in yeah. real time. And you're ready because you, you've seen it from all sides. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So throughout your career in broadcasting, who's been your most memorable interview or what game has been the most memorable for you? That's a great question. Um, I've had quite a few good ones. Mm -hmm. um, I think, gosh, okay, so here's one that everyone will remember if you if you follow NBA basketball. Mm -hmm. I was working playoffs, this was a couple of seasons ago, when Portland was playing OKC, mm -hmm. and Damian Lillard hit yeah, that yeah. shot, yeah. and he did the toddler <laughs> wave by that. I was doing that game, so I okay. had the Damian Lillard walk off, and I was right there when all yeah. that happened, you know, so yeah. that's really memorable. Because mm -hmm. that's one of those shots, those iconic shots that you see played over and over again that people yeah. see. Yeah. Um, but I also think when I was with the Charlotte Hornets and uh, Kemba Walker became the franchise's all-time leading scorer, I worked that game. Okay. And um, Del Curry, who is who he beat, oh, was wow. calling the game as an analyst. Oh, wow. And so when we interviewed Kemba after the game, uh -huh. he got very emotional. He was crying. The crowd was going crazy. Like that's memorable, you know, mm -hmm. like because he felt comfortable enough with me mm -hmm. to let his guard down and be vulnerable yeah. and be honest, you know, with yeah. his emotions. So to me, those are two that stand out. There's a ton more a ton funny, of, uh, yeah. <laughs> which may or may not be a great reflection on me as a reporter, yeah. but you know. <laughs> no, but I bet, I mean, you cover so much, so I know it's hard to really choose between yeah. everything. So, I know men don't ever get asked this question, but are there challenges with balancing like a family life in your career? Absolutely. And thank you for acknowledging that men yeah. don't get asked that question. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't. Yeah. And they still have the same challenge. But yeah. um, yes, there is a challenge for sure, especially if you're traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're ambitious in any career path, whether or not you travel on the road for that job, it's going to be challenging if you want to have a family. Mm -hmm. um, but traveling just adds another layer of complications, if you will. Logistics, mm -hmm. you have to figure out who's going to be home when, who's watching the kid, who's driving the kid. Yeah. Um, I tell people all the time, I married a saint. That's how I make it work. Um, we are best friends. He's my true partner. He's my like number one cheerleader and advocate. And as a woman, especially a woman in sports, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to find that guy mm -hmm. who can not just support you but like encourage you to mm -hmm. be ambitious and leave the house you know yeah. and I got the kids don't worry about us we're yeah. fine you know what I mean yeah it takes a special person and, and maybe it's not a gender thing because I tell him all the time I couldn't be that person <laughs> you know like you're not leaving me home with these kids again like yeah. I, <laughs> I couldn't do that you know uh -huh. um so it takes a special person maybe I shouldn't say man it takes a special mm -hmm. partner Mm -hmm. to do that and to continually support your partner in their ambitions. And he has done that like more than I can say. Like my yeah. friends call him St. Perry. Like I cannot call my girlfriends and talk trash about my husband because yeah. they will hang up on me. You know, like girl, up, bye. He's right. here. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that's the secret. That's the secret. He's here and he holds it down. He's basically a single dad during the NBA season, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a beautiful thing, though. Mm -hmm. It is. I'm really thing. lucky. So what's one piece of advice you would give to young women 
interested in having a career in broadcasting in sports broadcasting yes um oof there's a lot i would say um i think the two two most important things hard work mm -hmm. and that's the message i give to any career right no matter mm -hmm. what industry hard yeah. work you can't make up for that you just can't mm -hmm. um if you are passionate about something and you have the desire and you work hard at it there's no reason why you shouldn't be successful mm -hmm. that's just the way i see it so hard work is one and two is be true to yourself mm -hmm. and especially in sports broadcasting as a woman it is easy to fall prey to what other people want you to be okay because yeah. just like most other jobs there are trends in our industry, you know, mm -hmm. like there might be a certain look that people really want yeah. and maybe you don't fit inside that box. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But you have to be confident enough to know that it's okay. Yeah. To just be yourself. So if you're, if you're passionate and you work hard and you're true to yourself and you do things the right way, like don't cut corners, don't backstab, mm -hmm. don't cheat and lie to try to get ahead, you know, yeah. like, all those things like karma will eventually come back and bite you in the ass. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so treat people the way you want to be treated and understand that this is something that you want to do, but that it doesn't define who you are. Right. I think that's important. Right. No, that that's a good message. <laughs> good message. Um, so lastly, I got to ask, so you're from Tacoma Park, Maryland. Yep. So I know you definitely know the history of basketball in PG County. So who is or was your favorite player to come out of PG County? Woo! <laughs> Man, if I was on social media more, I'd be nervous. I'd get a lot of ads, but I'm not on <laughs> enough. Um, that is a great question. There's, I mean, the, the truth is there's so many talented players that have come out, male and female, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, man, I'm really trying to think. Um I mean, I think if you're going with active players, you would have to say Kevin Durant mm -hmm. because he's arguably the best player already in the league anyway, right. no matter where you're from, right? Right. Um, but if you're going on history and impact, mm -hmm. then I would have to go with um... – God, I don't... I'm scared to even say it. I don't know. Um Yeah, I had to go with Stevie Franchise. You know, he's okay. actually from Tacoma Park. Oh, okay. So, okay. you know, it's like the same actual town. So if I get some friends mm -hmm. calling me like, what are you talking about? So, yeah, those are my two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, those are, those are good too. Those are good too to have. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Tell everybody where we can see you next. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be on with you, firstly. Um, and I, I appreciate you inviting me. Um, I will be working um, some TNT sideline games. I just did the game last night in Philly. Next week, I will be in the NBA TV studios in Atlanta. So I'll be hosting game time next week and then back out on the road for TNT. So Tuesday night games, you can find me. Okay, great. Thank you again. And thank you to everybody watching. This is for the love of sports. Stay tuned for the next guest. Bye. Bye.